Lindsay here this morning. I don't think I need a mask. There's the soap thingy. Hey folks, after that little diversionary trip to Newbridge Market, we're going to head into Kilkenny. Kilkenny is one of those towns in Ireland which hasn't really lost its medieval feel. So we're going to have a little walk around and film. I hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Pretty. And then we just play the waiting game. So I think we can hang a right at the end of the bridge and go into the Dunn's car park. It's Kilkenny Castle. shop fronts. This is the first house. Like, he lived in the first house, 
And then as his family grew and his business grew, he built the second. And then the third was a house that he built for his oldest son mm. and his wife that, you know, later lived on the property with them. Um, so the first house would have been where he did all his business out of, uh, the main floor here and the bottom floor. And like I said, then they lived on the second and third stories. So there was only five of them originally living in this house. Um, but then the family grew to 11 children. So they had to build the second house, which is what you see here. And you know, John, a lot of people would say, oh, he's, he's a man that came for money and money makes money. So that's why he was rich. But I think he did have kind of a head on his shoulders as well. Um, money was no object to him. He he did like to spend money and um, more people would say he nearly pissed it away for the sake of, <laughs> because he had so much of it like you're talking about a time where people were taxed for the number of windows they had on their house yeah, yeah. and as you can see there's yeah. copious amounts of them here and there's no real need for it do you know what yeah. i mean yeah, yeah. Um, like yeah they didn't have electricity and stuff and i know light was important but you don't need eight windows on the whole side of your house yeah, yeah. you know um and he was clever as well like he bought this burgage plot which is the last standing burgage plot in the country he bought it from the monks and basically what he did was because it was illegal to obstruct light in this time he actually put windows on both sides of the house so nobody could build next to him so you know like he, he yeah 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 he's clever in that way you know but you'll notice um when you're leaving and as you're going through the courtyards and stuff he has his uh, coat of arms all over the place um, and that is quite literally so he could say there's my crest my wife's crest my father's family crest and my mother's family crest and that's just a way of him projecting to people oh look at the wealthy blood in my veins mm -hmm. you know yeah. what i mean like but when you're going up through the garden you'll notice at the very front yeah, is his yeah. vegetable patch because it's closest to the kitchen and they would have you know grown mm. veg there or whatever but we actually think that that wasn't, he, even, he probably didn't even use that for vegetables because realistically, he had a country estate farm not too far from right. here. He had the money and resources to get food grown in copious amounts from that farm to here. We think that that was solely because, like I said, he was a merchant, he exported and imported goods. I, we think that that was actually his way of just when he had people over going, oh, look at the fancy Spanish onions I can grow in my garden and you can't because I have access. His, his will was eight pages long. Now, he did have a lot, mm. but I mean, it was, it was particular to, to a strange degree, if you know what I mean. Like we have a copy of it here. Uh, he, um, he names his salt and his pepper shakers and, and everything. Like, he, he wanted kind of every single thing he owned to be accounted for and to know where it was going. He put actually clear instructions in his will and everything for what was to happen to his wife and his son and his family and stuff once he had died. And this was actually peculiar because a lot of the time back then, women didn't outlive their husbands. Because you're talking about a time where there was, there was very poor medical and women had loads of kids and they died a lot during childhood. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, so uh, you're talking of a time where it wasn't peculiar for men to go through two or three wives in their life, you know, let alone stick with the one and she had lived it, mm -hmm. you know. So um, he actually wrote in the will that uh, his wife Rose and his eldest son and daughter, the, not daughter, his, you know, daughter-in-law, <laughs> um, was to actually reside in the third house. Rose was to continue living here in the first house, but Rose was to be given access to the kitchen and the brewery, which were in the third house. He was, um, he was sovereign of Kilkenny twice. It was basically mayor yeah, before yeah. mayor yeah, was yeah. a king, okay. you know, and um, parliament actually did sit in Kilkenny for about nine years in the 1640s. So um, although he wasn't part of parliament or anything like that, his son Peter would have been, because he would have been of that era. Now, after Peter left here, we don't really have any trace of the roads when, where they went, because it was said that Peter left during the whole Cromwell period with the Protestants and the Catholics when he said to hell or to Connacht. And he said, right, well, I'm not gonna die when I have loads of money anyway, and I can afford to just live the same life in a different part of Ireland. Mm. So he went to Connacht. How come it's so, it's still here, the building, like? Do you know what I mean? When the building is, I'll, I'll tell you what, it did go very much into disrepair for years. It was used by the Gaelic League. And like, this has been 
numerous things. I mean, uh, the, the shop in there at one stage was a butcher and everything. Like, it's, oh. it's the Gaelic League used to teach Irish here and do Irish dancing and stuff. And now, the third house was more or less nearly, nearly destroyed because it went so badly into disrepair. And when it was taken over by the Gaelic League, that um, kind of bay window out the front that mm. you see over the first arch, yeah. that actually was a, a normal flat window because it had fallen off and they actually oh. didn't realise that it was a bay window. Right window. They just saw a gap in the wall and said, oh, a window goes there. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, we got specialists in, we got, you know, like we excavated the garden, we found out the layout of the garden, the layout of the house, the pieces oh, very good. behind it all. We even rebuilt the place using like the same works and all, you know, so we, we are very much original as we can be. Parliament was here for nine years and you'll notice Kilkenny, like many places in Ireland, is named out historically. So for example, that's why we're here on Parliament Street. Then down towards the cathedral, you have Irish town, that's where the Norman Irish men lived, and that's why they were led up the road to the town hall to their deaths during the whole, you know, they, they weren't the wealthy people living down there. Mm. Um, like, on the topic of burgage plots, because I, I didn't say this beforehand, a burgage plot was owned by a burgess, okay? And a burgess was someone who had political power um, that nobody else really had during this time. I mean, they had the right to vote, they had the right to run for mayor or parliament, you know, things that your average Joe So person just couldn't do. And this, uh, because of this, they owned tons of land. Like every pot, every uh, pot of land on the street at one stage would have been a burgage pot, but we are the last one because obviously they fall into disrepair, businesses move in, you know, not mm. just houses mm. and stuff like that, which is a pity, but it's the truth. So before John lived here, it was the it was uh, the abbot that lived here of the monks from Dushkabi in Bregnamana. I don't know, maybe you know Bregnamana, or it's it's only about fifteen minutes from here. But that's why they came from the cathedral there. So the way I like to describe it is, Kenny is laid out a bit like a fish, right? So the burgage plots are like the rib cages, and the cathedral you have the head of religious power, which would be the tail, and then the castle is the head of political power, which would be the head. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you'll notice, even if you do look at like maps or anything like that, so many other places in Ireland are actually laid out in this exact same way, because all of their towns and cities form the same way. Because like I said, Ireland is one of those very historical places. If you follow me in now, we'll go to the second courtyard, and I'll just explain a little bit more about it in there would have been because their pub, this would have been kind of nearly like their garden would say. That wasn't used, uh, although it might look like a driveway, um, and a lot of people ask me, is that the driveway? Mm. We know by the Italian Palazzo design of the house that it actually wasn't, because he would have done all of his work over there, and he was a very kind of peculiar man, so don't bother daddy while he's doing his work. This is the kitchen. As you can see, they had a massive um, stove at the end. Oh, <laughs> you could probably get a Ford Fiesta in it. <laughs> Sorry, there, guys. Yes. Oh, no um, so this would have been the kitchen, right? And you'll notice the rushes and the straw on the floor down there. That's what all of the rooms would have been lined with on the floor to literally just insulate the room. Um, they, they, back then, the engineering of these houses was very, very poor. <laughs> um, like, as you can see, all the windows are single glaze, the walls are made of stone, and the wi although the fire of the, where the stove was is blocked up now, if you actually stick your head in and look up, it, was, it used to be quite literally just a tunnel to the, the ceiling, basically, okay. you know? So there was no kind of way of keeping heat in or um, insulating the place properly. Uh, I'd say the kitchen was full of smoke and had very little heat in it, actually, considering the size of the fire that probably went into that thing. But this would have sat down in the likes of where Market Cross is, um, or the Market Yard down by Dunn's, and this was just used as a form of humiliation. So basically, if a husband cheated on his wife, uh, his friends would come and throw rotten tomatoes at him, or um, 
maybe if the wife came, she might throw stones or whatever at them, <laughs> you know? But yeah, that's just it. Pe people used to like to take pictures in it and write in what they had. We had chalk for it, but due to COVID, we had to take the chalk away. We excavated it in 2008 because it actually, believe it or not, used to be a car park. Yeah. Yeah, um, and all of this was lying beneath it. And we just didn't know that it was here. So we said, well, he, we know he had a garden. We used to talk about the garden on the tour, so we said, Let's dig up the garden and see what we find. There's a pang in the heart of the town. I wouldn't know it was here at all. Birdie house. It's supposed to be cloudy all day today, according to Accu weather, quote unquote Accu weather. Kilkenny and Roth House. Uh, we didn't get everything done today that we wanted to, such as the castle and the uh, cathedrals. The next time we'll, we'll visit, we'll cover that. I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks very much.